are back and we're moving into uh, the second part of our show where we recognize that a lot of people are at home, lots of time on their hands and we're hoping to give you some ideas as to what you can do with that time. So this morning we have a treat for you. This is a familiar face that you know. Joining us uh, live via Skype from Barbados, we have Jamie Rock. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning, Good morning everyone. Good morning. Happy Monday to everybody. <laughs> yeah, or the uh, other Sunday, just another Sunday for many. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Jamie. Definitely feels like. Yeah. Another Sunday. Yeah. Jamie, yeah. um, you are in Barbados. That's where you live and work now. And, and I just wanted to start off with kind of an overview as to uh, what's happening there. You guys have over 50 cases. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and you're on lockdown. Yes. So um, uh, last week, the prime minister delivered the message that we would be on curfew from 8 o'clock in the night till six o'clock the next morning but that was when we were at about 30 something cases but that's since increased in the past week up to 50 some 50 plus cases about 52 and so the decision was made to have a 24-hour lockdown so you're not allowed to leave your home unless you're going to somewhere where they're offering essential services so like the pharmacies um, hospitals supermarkets are closed banks are closed restaurants are closed you can't leave your house for the next maybe two weeks, maybe longer, but that's what they're asking people to do so that the virus doesn't continue to spread as rapidly as it currently is now. What about enforcement at this point? Because here in Belize, getting people to remain indoors or to stay at home is quite a challenge in and of itself. What is it like over there in terms of enforcement? Yeah, so the police are very vigilant. They've been on the roads, they've been on the streets to make sure that people are um, abiding by this, these, this new normal. I know it's very hard because a lot of people, um, they don't have the resources to be able to stock up for the next however long period that we're in this time. So it's a bit frightening, it's a bit scary. People still want to be with their loved ones and see their loved ones because that's just the routine that they have. Um, but the, the government has been very, very, very vigilant with sending out direct messages from s senior officials, from the prime minister, um, and they're doing the best they, they can. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a pretty serious lockdown. So what happens if you yeah. don't have enough supplies? Were you told ahead of time to get supplies to last for two weeks because you wouldn't be able to go to the supermarket? Yeah, so the first message from um, the Prime Minister was that the lockdown would be until um, April 15th. Mm -hmm. And so persons were given a two-day window so where they could go and do a, a shop um, yeah. to make sure that they have enough supplies for two weeks. But when the message came, um, I think it was on, on Thursday, last last Thursday, that it was, it was going to be for 24 hours for the, ne for the unforeseeable future the supermarkets went crazy. So what they've been doing, they've been doing offering delivery services. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the supplies that you need, you can send them emails um, or call, um, yeah, just go on their website or their social media page and they'll try to deliver groceries to your house. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've been uh, working from home since then and in mm -hmm. fact, uh, you are going to share with us one of your hobbies that you've taken up as a result of being <laughs> locked in due to COVID-19. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So being at home, I'm, it, I'm kind of a strange case because I like being at home. My home is my sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And so I, I do a lot to keep myself entertained. But recently I've started a YouTube channel where I post content about topics that matter to me, what my life has been like since moving to another country, how I'm adjusting to the whole um, time of social distancing and COVID, and just other other videos that, that kind of content that I want to see and I hope others want to see and, and I want to make. So that's been my, <laughs> my new hobby. Nice. Yeah, so it's called, it's called vlogging, vlogging, what's the right term? Yeah, it's, it's vlogging, so it's a video log of your experience, so yeah. the things that you'd like to do, topics you're interested in, yeah, vlogging. Okay. 
her. And I mean, what, what made you decide that this is how you wanted to spend your time? Yeah, that's, that's a very interesting question because um, I know a lot of people aren't like, they, they aren't very, they're very shy. Well, they might not be shy in real life, but when it comes to putting themselves on, on the internet, that's a whole nother story. And I'm also very introverted which you might not think, but when it comes to things that mean something to me, that matters to me, I'm happy to talk about it. Yeah. So I started a, a channel because I, I felt like maybe there might be persons like me who are by themselves in another country mm -hmm. and they're looking for content that they can relate to. Mm -hmm. And so that's the main reason I started my channel. I'm, it's not the goal to be like a successful YouTuber or anything. That's not the goal. I, I very much so love the job I have now and I don't see myself giving it up anytime soon if they'll have me. Um, it was just another way for me to express what's been on my mind. Um, we've been over consuming so much and I know I'm adding to the content that people are over consuming, but hopefully it's healthy distract. It's a healthy distraction. And so yeah, that's basically why I'm doing this. What has been the reception in terms of viewers and following of the content that you're posting online? Right. So this might not seem like a lot to a lot of people, but mm -hmm. in the two weeks, in the few weeks that I've been posting, I went from having zero subscribers to 60 subscribers, probably all my friends. <laughs> um, I don't get a lot of comments on my videos, but I do get a lot of messages, private messages in, in my, on my phone on my WhatsApp from my friends saying this really encouraged me you're so good at this and just it's overwhelming the amount of behind the scenes support that I've been getting it's very encouraging and it makes you feel less alone you know yeah you know and yeah. I, I think it's even beyond um, one you give us a window into what it looks like in your neck of the woods and what it's like to be uh -huh. locked down there but we know mm -hmm. um, that more and more we're hearing from mental health professionals saying that mm -hmm. there's a lot of anxiety and there's a lot of depression that people can experience from being yeah. alone and also having the fear of, of the unknown with COVID-19. Have you yeah. found it to be a kind of stress relief as well, helping to keep you calm and putting your efforts into something else? Yeah, definitely. At first, I wasn't panicking because I thought it wouldn't be as as crazy as it is now. But then after it started to kind of snowball, it really started playing on my, my mind. I wasn't able to sleep. Well, I'm still not able to sleep as well as I'm used to. Um, I was feeling like it was hard to reach out to any particular person. Yes, I can talk to my family and I can talk to my friends, but everybody's going through the same thing. Yeah. So it's hard to have an, an escape. So I thought, well, let me just be my own kind of escape and just talk to a camera and, and, and get it out. Because honestly, it's very different. Um, when you are alone and there's no crazy pandemic happening mm -hmm. and when you're alone and then there is okay. because there are certain restrictions that come with the pandemic you can't leave your house you can't move the way that you're mm -hmm. that you're used to and it's it it could really play a lot on your mind especially if you're a you're a social butterfly if you're if you're a wanderer like me i love going out and exploring barbados and finding new places to go and things to see yeah. and so being at home has been a bit of a challenge but um you know trying these videos has given me a really healthy creative outlet to um distract myself from the, the things that might cause me to feel you know sad and uh, a little bit out of sorts yeah we're all feeling it it's amazing because mm -hmm. i remember we were checking in on each other what was it february and and we yes. were saying oh you know it's not it's not that big yet and suddenly yeah. now you're on 24 hour lockdown. <laughs> and I was offering you a, a room if you wanted to escape, but I don't think you want to escape here anymore. Jenny, do you feel overwhelmed being being um, on lockdown, so to speak, for 24 hours? I know you said you're, you're a homebody, but um, 24 hours of being inside the house kind of seems, you know, at some point you would want pressure, you'd want to see something or what have you. 
Yeah, definitely. I do find myself going outside in in my in the backyard a, a lot more, just appreciating the fact that I could just be mobile and move. Being inside is a definite, um, and I'm not equating it to being in prison because there are some people. This is not prison. I have TV. I have Netflix. I have food, um, but it feels like you're trapped. Yeah. Because you're not allowed, and it's you're not allowed to move freely. I can't go to the beach. I live two minutes away from the beach and I can't go there and that kind of restriction is very different because it's not like I can't go there because I'm on punishment I can't go there for my own safety mm -hmm. so it's a hard dynamic to kind of balance and juggle but at the end of the day it's only for a short time it's only for well hopefully for a short time if we all are compliant and that's yeah. the thing the, the, the more thing. we are compliant the quicker we'll be able to to get over this this pandemic so absolutely yeah uh, what are what, what's it like for the people there because you know belizean culture and you get exposed to a different caribbean culture um just is it is it as tough as, as it is for us to get everyone on board yeah um well obviously it is as tough because the numbers have been increasing very rapidly people aren't used to this this is and a paradise this is an escape this, this place is where people go to you know be set loose and and roam and be free and i think that um it's been hard because there are a lot of families who live paycheck to paycheck who aren't used to doing long haul shop shopping who um just need, they they can't, they have no choice but to shop from on a sometimes daily weekly basis so having that restriction, some of them being, a lot of them being out of a job because people are in the hotel industry, a lot of people work in tourism, it's been very difficult. There's been a lot of violence on the streets, mm -hmm. uh, not to the point where people are being murdered or, or killed or things like that, but there are a lot of fights. Just not, I don't think it's because people are wanting to be fight. It's just that, you know, frustrations are high. Yeah. Um, people aren't used to this new normal and it's been, it's been tough. 52 cases is a lot for a very small country like Barbados. Barbados is, is half our population in Belize and even smaller in, in, ter in terms of geographical size. Um, so that just speaks to how people aren't used to this, this these, new, um, these new guidelines and these new restrictions. But hopefully now with the 24 hour lockdown, people will, people will take heed. So let's talk, uh, talk us through this. You, you, you started your uh, video logs or your vlog, um, yeah. which is kind of like documenting your experience. So for people at home who are going a bit stir crazy or want a creative outlet, um, talk us through the do's and don'ts, what to do, where to start. You know, some people are really shy. They don't like putting out everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first thing I had to, I, ha I have as my do, is do it for yourself and what i mean when i say that is be authentic there are a lot of if you want to create content if you want to put out videos or even start a social media ch channel on instagram or twitter or TikTok, or whatever do it from a genuine place because people see through fakeness they see through um you know mm -hmm. a facade so do it because you want to do it and secondly use what you have i shoot edit upload everything from my phone <laughs> i don't use a laptop i don't have any high-tech equipment the only other equipment that i have on top of my phone is my tripod that i bought on amazon for ten dollars okay so use okay. use what you have don't feel like you need high-tech fancy equipment in order to be yeah. um you know uh, produce good content there's so many apps that you can use to help your content um, you know, look good and, and, and be um, appealing to whoever you're, you're sending out your content to. So that's my second tip. And my third tip would be to plan. Don't just say, well, I'm going to film a video today and then just film it. <laughs> I have a, 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 a um, journal of ideas that I have and I, I map it out. I talk about, I write down the points that I want to hit on. I sometimes even do a, a little mini essay for myself so that I can kind of flesh out my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. That's all I've been doing um, to, to do, produce my content, my don'ts. I don't produce any content 
when I'm feeling uninspired because I'm just gonna do something that I think people want to see and that I think will get me likes and then it's not going to be authentic and it's just going to be a fail from the get. So don't produce content if you're not feeling inspired. Mm -hmm. If don't, um, yeah. My second don't would be, don't do it because you want to get views. That's <laughs> not going to be, that's not going to be a good motivator because if it's your first channel, unless you have a following already, you're not going to get the kind of reception that you you dream of maybe getting in the first. So don't do yeah. it for the views. Yeah, don't do it for the views. <laughs> and that and makes you yes, an anomaly are, already, right? <laughs> yes, 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 definitely, definitely. So just be authentic. Just do it for yourself. Yeah. And as you said, it's it's a bit therapeutic in itself. But what it does do, if we would have people kind of documenting their experience all over. <laughs> is that we'd one not feel alone because yeah. we'd realize yes. people are having the same thoughts and feelings all yes. over the world and we also get just a little bit of a view as to how other people are doing and what their experience is like yeah yeah, yeah. definitely i love and that's why i love youtube i don't have any kind of social media platform i don't have facebook i don't have instagram i don't have the rest of it i only have youtube Mm -hmm. And what I love about YouTube is that it's such a community. I've learned to do so many things on YouTube. I've learned recipes. I've learned workouts. Yeah. I've learned how to do my hair. I learned how to do my makeup. I've learned how to, I'm learning Korean <laughs> on um, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's such a great space where people can share ideas yeah. and, mm -hmm. and teach you things. So I, I love the community like you're talking about that that's on YouTube. Nice. nice, nice Alright, nice. so Isani, will yeah. we see you doing a video log? <laughs> Until and unless I'm on the 24 hour lock. <laughs> I would love a YouTube channel on how to be a journalist. That, that would be interesting to watch because that that's cool. a very yeah. different space to be in, right Isani? Yeah, said, and well, there's a good. lot of behind the scenes that people just, they yep. have no idea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all the challenges and all the successes that come along with this kind yeah. of job. Yeah. Good there idea. should definitely be a space where people see what see what goes on behind the scenes at Channel 5. Not too mm -hmm. much, you don't want to spill all the tea, <laughs> but just so that people get an appreciation of all the work that does go behind um, yeah. what it means to work yeah. at Channel 5. That would be interesting. That's nice, right, and you nice. know, because you used to be here right in this very same yeah, couch. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> it's so good to see you, Jamie, and we're glad oh. you are safe and uh, keeping yourself uh, mentally occupied as well. We appreciate you taking the time to give us these tips. Maybe we'll see a Belizean uh, vlogger pop up now or multiple sharing <laughs> their experience as well. Yes, definitely, definitely. All right, and how do people find you? Yeah, so my YouTube channel is Jamie Rock, J-A-M-I-E-R-O-C-K-E. -E. It's very simple, nothing glamorous, just my name. All right. All right, we'll find you, we'll subscribe and add to those numbers and keep on uh, <laughs> being a part of your journey. All righty, guys, stay safe. Be All happy, right. You too, journey. stay safe. Bye. Bye. There you go. And that is one uh, quarantine hobby that you can mm -hmm. work on. And I think that's such a great... You know, imagine if we could see all across the Caribbean. Yeah. Just starting with us, to the culture we know, what people are doing, what it's like, what their lockdown is like, 24-hour mm -hmm. lockdown for two weeks. I'll tell you, <laughs> we are on an 8 to 5 curfew, yeah. right? Fortunately for you and I, we have work, so that means we still get out mm -hmm. of the house. When I return home around 7 o'clock or a little after 7, everywhere is dead. Mm -hmm. It's like a virtual ghost town. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> I like to joke that I'm, I'm in self-isolation, right? So I'm, I'm sequestered from the rest of the yeah, family and the rest of the world. Because we're high exposure, yeah. Yeah. And so I have to find things to do to entertain myself before bedtime, Marlene. Mm -hmm. And what I do, I come outside, I put on my speakers, not too loud, oh, but I my speakers. Say. And I have Soka Thursday, well, School Friday, and I go through the whole gamut. And that's because you have other persons who are on Instagram doing the same thing. They're yeah. playing for others, basically, and it becomes a community thing. For myself, that's what I do. I just play my music, I read, I do different stuff. Yeah. Enjoy the silence. Aside from what I'm playing, 
everywhere else is completely quiet. And yeah. so sometimes just sitting in silence and you're taking everything, yeah. you're more observant of the things, the ambience that you would ordinarily just overlook. Yeah. And so that's one good thing. But doing it for 30 days straight is kind of tough. Yeah, and we have to be creative. Mm -hmm. We have to be creative. It's not about trying to find ways to break the rules. It's about finding ways to thrive in the situation that we're in. So yeah. for me, I'm just using the time to do the things that I couldn't do. All those things mm -hmm. that you keep on saying, you know, I want to <laughs> get around to organizing my closet, you yeah. know, or cleaning yeah. things in a very d detailed way. Um, and you always put it off. You, and then the weekend comes around or, you know, mm -hmm. you don't take that time off to do it. So that's what I've been doing. We'll see how long that lasts. But that does, <laughs> you know, I, I've always found that sometimes yeah. organizing and cleaning kind of restores that feeling of control when mm -hmm. you're out of sorts. So that is, feels a lot better. When you've organized and you've cleaned, then what else is there? Well, I'm not done yet. I only have weekends, remember? So I get two days. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a neat freak. No. So everything is organized. So once that is done, then there really isn't much else to do. So, and then I just, I'm a music lover first yeah. and foremost. So I just indulge well, you, myself. You gotta start the live <coughs> DJing. I think everybody's doing that now. Well, it reminds me of my days in radio, but I know, it, you it's used a departure. To DJ. Yeah. Like you used to have a radio show with music. So yeah. Um, yeah I just maybe. I just play the stuff that I love. You know, you have all this time on your hands, and so there yeah. there are albums, there are certain genres that you would have wanted to go back and revisit, but you're so busy with everything in your everyday life. That now that you have all of it, for me, now that I have this this extra time on my hands, I just go back and dig for all the classic stuff. <laughs> okay. Takes me back to my childhood and that sort of stuff. So yeah. this is and this is part of why we had this conversation with Jamie, mm -hmm. um, and and we hope to have more as well. If you have any unique ideas as to what you're doing to spend your time or to pass the time that you are in quarantine or mm -hmm. that we are in this particular state of emergency. Let us know, and if you feel like you can be able to share tips with others, we will definitely work to get you on the show as well. The point is we want to ensure that people find something to get engaged in yeah. and that we stay serious about staying home and find something to keep us engaged in that. Something meaningful, constructive, or productive to engage yeah. in yeah. by our time. All right, but we're going to go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, it will be for kids' time, so please. <laughs> 